Hello and welcome to Be Free, where faith and forgiveness leads to freedom. I'm Ashley Gronholm, and today we're going to be talking about effective evangelism. And I'm so delighted that I have a wonderful guest with me today, Lance McKinney. He's a good friend of mine and just a blessing in my life. I'm so delighted to have him today. He's a wonderful man of God, ministering for 29 years now in Spain, in Madrid, Spain with YWAM. He's a, a part of their leadership team there and um, has so much to offer and to share with us about evangelism, but not just evangelism, effective evangelism. And it's so important today that we know how to talk to people who don't know Jesus. What's the point of talking to people about Jesus if we just turn them off or, or freak them out or, or they turn and want to walk the other way because we're just speaking in terminology and in the spirit that they don't understand or even can even receive? Yeah. So what, what would you say about that, Lance? Well, I would say years ago, about tw in the year 2000, actually, uh, we were doing some outreaches in southern Spain, and we had done outreach six days a week for six weeks. And at the end of our time, I stayed home to write a newsletter to our partners. And we'd only seen two people come to Christ, a six-year-old woman and an eight-year-old girl. Wow. And I was frustrated. We were sleeping on the floor of a used furniture store. Uh, there were cockroaches, rats, some great <laughs> stories. But I realized that we were not being effective. And so I was frustrated. And I was kind of complaining to God, whining. I said, God, it's not worth it. Only two people in six weeks, and it's just not worth it. And God stopped me mm. and said, Lance, wow. those two people were worth my son's life. So I repented. I said, okay, God, if it was just for them, Amen. it was worth it. But what do we do about the 42 million people in Spain that don't know you? 42 million now people. Now it's more. Now we've grown in the right. last 20 years. Wow. And God said something to me that shook me because it was, it was not the way I ever thought before. And he said, Lance, they haven't rejected me. They've rejected you. They haven't mm. heard the gospel because of how wow. you're trying to portray the gospel. And he took me back to a morning. We were out in, in Torremolinos in the southern Spain. And we'd gone out into the streets with a church with about 20 people from the church and our team of 18. We had some poster boards and a couple guitars. And it looked like a very poorly <laughs> organized it. protest. Oh, it was terrible. It was embarrassing. <laughs> um, we got out there. One of the guitars kept on going out of tune, but they kept on using it. It was, it was embarrassing. And um, finally, Amen. one of the strings broke. And I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. So I offered, I volunteered to go find a string because I didn't want to be there. Wow. I went, found a string, and I came back. As I'm walking up the street, I see the team there, and I just thought, no. And I went and had a coffee. And God spoke mm -hmm. to me and said, Lance, if you don't want to even be there, why do you think anybody in the streets mm -hmm. would want to stop and listen? Wow. And he reminded me of the scripture of Romans chapter 10. It said, who shall call upon the name of the Lord? If they've not heard, how shall they hear unless somebody preaches? How shall they preach unless they're sent? And I realized, how should I hear unless it's shared in a way they understand? Amen. And so God brought me to Acts chapter 17, where Paul, he goes to Athens. He sees that they're ungodly. He was vexed in his spirit. So he mm. went to the temple and started wow. debating and preaching. People heard him and they said, wow, this guy's teaching something new. Let's hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Took him to the Areopagus and he didn't use the Torah. He didn't use the Old Testament. He didn't preach from the Bible he actually said, really? he didn't, he actually <laughs> said, literally read it. It's, it's a good read because huh. it's shocking because he does everywhere else. He debates using the scriptures because he's talking to Jews. But when he talks to the, the Athenians, he says, I see that you're religious in all things. I used to think that was an insult, okay. but I think he was actually saying, good job. You're pursuing, right. you're looking for God. Building rapport. Yeah. yeah. And so he says, I see you're religious in all things. He said, matter of fact, I saw an altar to the unknown God, and that's the God I want to talk to you about. Mm. And then he didn't quote the scriptures. He quoted a Greek poet, in him we live and breathe and have our being. Wow. Finding what, that common ground. He used wow. what they knew instead of yeah. basing his authority on the Bible or the Torah or Jesus is the Messiah based on the prophets. He didn't do that because for them, the prophets had no authority. So he knew how to use culture itself to bring the message of Jesus and the resurrection. That was interesting because at the end, he talked about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And that's where people got, ah, this guy's a little weird. So they rejected the message. Okay. So it said some, um, well, he, some mocked, some wanted to know more, and some believed. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have the same results amongst the pagans as he did amongst the Jews. But he knew how to use their culture to present the gospel the way they would understand. And he was relevant in their culture. And some believe. And that's how they started the church there in Athens. Wow. 
That's an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Isn't that something? So what should we be doing as evangelists when we go out into street evangelism like you do in Spain with your young teams on fire for the Lord? First, tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. With we, your team. Yeah, we have a team that we started 10 years ago this year um, because I had some dancers, break dancers, young men that were break dancers that wanted to use their talent for God. Mm -hmm. But cool. no church in their right mind knew how to do that. Right. What are break dancers going to do? But I knew of a team up in Holland that used break dancers and guys that broke stuff, strong men, that used that as parables to connect with people to share the gospel. So we went on a trip with this young man, David. He and I went for two weeks. He's like, okay, I can use my talent for God. Mm -hmm. So we actually started a team Amen. of dancers with the whole idea of gaining, well, catching people's attention, get their attention, earn the right to speak into their lives. Mm -hmm. What I find is why would Amen. somebody want to listen to wow. you? If you think about it, if you put yourself in the shoes of a non-believer, why would they listen to you? And you're thinking, well, because I have the truth. It's, it's the word of God. And they we're don't relying care. on the Word of God to stand on its own and just to, you know, speak to their hearts. But... Right. If it's not an authority for them, then why would they listen? So what we did, okay. what we do is we actually use dance and drama and lights and sound. So we do events wow. and we get people's attention. And our dancers are amazing. We have one break dancer and he'll do this thing on his hands where he spins on his hands. And, and it, it's amazing. And everybody wants to hear what he has to say after that. Yeah. And I got to say, I've seen some of the footage of what Lance does and it's incredible. I mean, his team, they're talented, gifted dancers. These kids are passionate. They're on they fire are. for the Lord. So there's authenticity going on. It's not just skill and talent. Sure. There's authenticity they're and living there's the anointing yeah. in what they're doing, but you're reaching the community on a level that they can receive. Well, all of a sudden they want to hear because if what if a fat yeah. old guy like me goes up on stage, <laughs> nobody in their right mind I'm wants to hear that. what I, I did just say that. It's, it's, I'm okay. Uh, because actually when we started, we actually did two outreaches where I had to go out on stage because the evangelist did the altar call. Nobody moved. So then I was the sound guy, all sweaty in summer in Spain, <laughs> and I was nasty, but no, we had a hundred and something people that heard the gospel. Nobody responded. I went out on stage and said, you must not have understood what he said. Gave an altar call and the people responded. So then I lost 60 pounds because I'm like, I don't want my physical appearance to be a stumbling block for people to listen to me. Wow. Then I trained my guys to, to be able I to preach. I to go on a diet. And I, I, no, but I gained the 60 pounds back because I don't need to be on stage anymore. No. Well, you don't have to do everything. There, so we actually earn the right to speak in their lives, we get their attention, earn the right to speak in their lives, we preach the whole gospel. So in Spain and most of the Western world, most people believe in the Big Bang, evolution. So if the first five words of the Bible, in the beginning God created, aren't true, then why would they believe the rest of the Bible? And so right. we actually show them, we use the creation and we have a dance where they, God comes out and creates Adam and Eve and they, we talk about how everything around us reveals a deliberate act of creativity, mm. not just happenstance. And it's interesting, depending on where we're at, our team's very good at using examples. One time we were next to a big cathedral and they said, you know, this cathedral didn't just happen by happenstance. There was a designer, there was an architect, there were builders, and it was here right. because people actually... So we take people through this process of realizing, okay, there's somebody behind this creation. And um, then we say, but then we answer the question, what if, if God is real, why is there suffering? Why are there people dying of, right. of, why, of hunger? Why is there abuse? Why is mm -hmm. there, you know, why are there hurricanes and tornadoes and natural disasters? If God's a loving God, why does he allow this to happen? Well, right. the answer is, is because we've rebelled. We've chosen to rebel. And with that, evil, bad, uh, the word in Spanish is, is just bad, evil came into the world, sin. And it's a corrupt creation. And when we talk about this and we, and we bring it down to everybody has made decisions that you know hurt the people around you, mm -hmm. hurt yourself, hurt mm -hmm. the earth, um, right. and hurt God. And everybody's having this revelation in their hearts like, yeah, I know I've done things wrong. Everybody. Right. right. Nobody resists that because they all know they've done stuff they shouldn't do. Right. And then they we, have any self-awareness. They're not going to yeah, resist Yeah. I mean, that. nobody's going to say, yeah. no, I've lived a perfect life. Right. And so there's this something going on in their hearts where they're like, yeah, I've done things that have hurt other people. So then we share personal testimonies of lives changed. We, with our new event that we do, we show the inner world of people. Because one of the things that we often show when we do evangelism is we're talking about people who have gone to extremes, whether they've been in bondage of drugs, now they're free, which is a mm -hmm. great testimony. Right. But for your average person, they're like, yeah, well, you needed God because you were trapped in drugs. I don't need God. I'm okay. I'm a good person. Yeah. I'm, I'm nice. I, I help people. Almost yeah. every drama I've ever seen as a do evangelism, it's about sex, 
drugs, um, what's the other, alcohol. And so you get a good person and like, yeah, you needed God because he's a crutch for you. Wow. Okay. That's how people think. This is how non-Christians wow. think. They look at us like, yeah, you needed God because you had issues in your you life. You were a mess. I come from a good family. <laughs> I have a good God job. You needed God clean you up? Yeah. Yeah. So wow. we actually show what about a normal person, their struggles. So, so the things that we're doing lately have to do with self-image. So we have a, a drama where there's a girl that's looking in a mirror and she sees herself and she can't stand herself. There's actually, we have a, a chubbier girl on our team that stands behind the mirror. It's a see-through mirror and they're mimicking the images and, and then she's about to throw up into a garbage basket. And Jesus comes out and says, no, you don't have to do it. I love you just the way you are. Aww. And she looks at wow. Jesus and she chooses. And here's the factor. We choose to do wrong. She chooses right. to, to wow. you know, vomit and, and, and then these demons come through the mirror and they just manhandle her and they do this dance and it's very artistic and uh, kind of contemporary dance. Then right. they come back and she, then lights go out and then a guy comes out and he's walking around and, and there's these thoughts in his mind that are represented by these four or five different people in black with masks on, white masks, just mm. you don't see their face. And they said, you know, you're better than all the rest. You don't need them. And just kind of isolation issues was you know people deal with, and okay. then they're like, yeah, and then they, they hand him a telephone and it's understood you know it's indulge in pornography is the issue, and Jesus comes out he's like no you don't have to do it, there's another way yes and yes. he looks at Jesus looks at the phone chooses the phone, mm-hmm. and it's trapped in the chair lights mm-hmm. go out wow and then another guy comes out and he shares how his life he, he was an immigrant he moved to Spain. Um, and he felt like he was the ugliest kid around because he was black. Everybody else is, you know, olive skin. By the end of his testimony, he's a rapper. And so he sings his testimony. And it's an amazing moment in the testimony where he says, and now this good looking guy that's in front of you, because it, it's, it's wrapped and it's just elegant. Yeah. He's like, now knows who he is because of God. Yeah. And so we watch yeah. these three testimonies of people. And most people have struggled with their self-image, thoughts about themselves or other people. And so then a normal person can see it. So then the answer is, so God created us. We've all made decisions that have separated us from him. Um, Everybody struggles with things and makes bad decisions. So now what's the solution? And that's where we actually have drama, where we show Jesus taking the place of the same girl. It's the same girl that does Eve, that does self-image. So it's kind of her story throughout. And then we show how she makes decisions when it comes to uh, lust, um, addiction, depression, um, well, it leads to depression. And then her choice is death. That's what the enemy wants for all of us. He wants us dead, whether it's by Take suicide or murder, yeah. he wants you dead. Yeah. And um, so she gets this point where she's just getting beat up by these demons. And Jesus comes in, sets her aside, takes these black things, puts them around his neck, and he takes her place. And yes. he takes the beating for her, he gets whipped, he gets hung on the cross, but then he raises from the dead. And what's amazing Amen. is when you watch these non-Christians, these people have never heard the gospel. They've never set foot inside of a church. They see this story. And we were, we were in a small town in Avila, Spain, um, just a little town. And mm-hmm. after we did this event, every single person there, when they said, you know, Jesus gave up his life for you. All he asks in return is your life. All you have to do is repent of your sin, ask for forgiveness and give him your life. Make him the Lord yes. of your life. Make him the master. He's in charge. Every single person came forward. And so our team of about 20 were praying with them. Jesus. Oh, it was amazing to watch because everybody was just infixed on this message. And um, so when, then afterwards, I was with the sound stuff. Um, Our team was praying for everybody. And a guy came over with tears running down his face and introduced himself as the mayor. He said, I'm the mayor of the town. Wow. He said, seeing Jesus take my place and put my sin around his neck just broke my heart. He said, will you come back? And we've got a castle well, uh, we'd love for you to preach this to my whole city. Will you come back? We'll pay for whatever expenses. Thanks, God. We went back. Hey, everyone. If you've been blessed by this program, I'd like to invite you to consider becoming a partner of Be Free Ministry. With your help, we can win millions to Jesus and reach over 195 nations of the world. To give, Simply download our app, Be Free Ministry International, or go to our website at BeFreeInChristMinistry.org. Together, we can carry the good news of Jesus Christ to the nations. Thank you so much for your gift, and God bless you. 
So, yes. But it's amazing as people wow. hear the story in a way that they can actually process it and not argue with it. So in other words, it's presented in a way they're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Or that's interesting. The Holy Spirit works in their heart. Yeah. And as the Holy Spirit, most of the time what I find with evangelists when they're preaching the gospel, they're presenting it in such a way, either saying what well, says in John chapter three, what does a non-believer think when that happens? Like, who cares what the Bible They don't value what it says in John Not chapter all. three. I mean, the, the word of God carries power and weight. Well, we and quote it without saying it's from the Bible. Okay. We, we, okay. We'll, we'll speak the scriptures without saying First Corinthians Good. chapter four says this. It's not preachy. It's not formal. It's not the religious way. We just religious speak way. truth. I mean, what a powerful vehicle to reach people, to engage them where they're at. This, this dramatized version of the Bible, the dancing, the theater, the theatrical, yeah. um, you know, presentations that you're basically doing in street evangelism. Well, so or you're setting up like venues, stages in, yeah. in the streets of Madrid. And well, all over Spain, well, we've done it in Portugal, all over Africa. But so it's a, it's a great way to present the gospel. And one of the one of the reasons why it's great is because we, we do good publicity, we have great advertising, and so people come expecting a show, expecting dance and drama and so on. And right. we tell them from the beginning, you know, we're young Christian artists that want to share the most important story. Which, by the way, is already an important part of their culture. Yeah, in it that is community yeah. dance and theater, and, and yeah. they're very passionate they love people, arts, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're tapping into something that already exists in that community that the community that they value. Well, and the the thing is, is literally, it's a free show. So what do you have to lose? Show. So people come, they love it. it it's done well. The excellence is very important. It's it, Spain is, you know, it's Europe. So the, there's a high level of excellence expected and our team does a great job. Now, the interesting thing is, is um, I was with a pastor and we were doing an event in his church and we normally don't do our events in churches okay. because there's a, that's a hurdle asking people to come over that right. threshold. Right. Um, so we actually don't do events in churches. Well, this one time we had already planned this event. There was no civic theater, civic center theater, um, or any other venue that we could get in the town. So we opted for the church. And I was frustrated because only about 250 people came. Normally we should have had 500. Only 250 people. Yeah. I think that that's a pretty good turnout. No, I was wow, sure with this church. 500. Well, it should have been five, for them. It's, okay. it's all math. How many mm -hmm. believers are there? How many people live in the city? How much publicity do you do? It's all, it's all math. Right. So with this one church, it should have had 500. We're doing an event Day after tomorrow, there will be a thousand people in the square um, because we have seven churches working. It's a bigger town. Anyway, it's all numbers. Um, it is math. It's math. And, and you just know how much work they put in. So this is the thing. There's this spiritual dynamic and then there's this practical dynamic. And so we have people praying and just asking God to work in people's hearts. And, and the Holy Spirit wants to move in people's hearts. Yes. So the question is, are we going to do the work? Mm -hmm. I, I, I get really frustrated with people that blame you know, must not be God's time. People aren't coming to Jesus. I'm like, well, maybe you didn't do the work or wow. maybe you were irrelevant. Jesus. Maybe you were irrelevant. The Bible says that he would have none <laughs> to perish, but all come to repentance. He wants everyone. So it's not him not moving on people's hearts. Half the time, I believe we're the obstacle and God wants. Anyway, so that's, that's, I'll, yeah. I'll get back to the story. Or we can just get in the way of what God wants to do because of how we've been indoctrinated or to, to, 100%. to, to do certain and things. And we don't even realize it. We don't right. even realize we're Because being, it's our background or it's yeah. our training. We're or speaking our language, not theirs. Yeah. Anyway, we do this, this event in the church. About 250 people came. I was frustrated and I was afraid the pastor would be frustrated because they worked hard. This church worked hard to invite their friends. Mm -hmm. 53 people gave their lives to the Lord, I remember. And um, I went up to the pastor and I'm like, Pastor Fernando, what do you think? He's like, Lance, this was amazing. He's like, I'm so excited because yeah. my neighbor who I've been door to door with. They live in an apartment building for 20 years. We've shared the gospel with her for 20 years. Today, she heard the whole gospel. Mm -hmm. And there she is with my wife right now, giving her life oh, to Christ. Yeah. So the, the, that's the beauty that's of events. For me, that's the beauty of event style evangelism is that if you do it well, they hear the whole gospel. Whereas in a conversation, it's a conversation. So they can take it a different way and you may not be able to share the whole gospel. The other thing we found works on a one-on-one -on -one level in Spain being very culturally relevant is people in Spain love to give their opinions. And we created a survey. We had about 200 questions. We're like, what, what could, how can we start a conversation with somebody in the streets? Mm -hmm. And so we actually wrote a survey. We had about 200 questions. We boiled it down to four categories, love, family, society, and faith. And so we, we actually create this survey. It's only got four questions in each. And then the last two questions in each one is the same, are the same. 
And what's interesting is we can go up to someone on the street and say, hey, we're doing a survey. My name is Lance. I work with the Youth of the Mission, Christian's youth organization. We want to see what people think and we want to make people think about issues that are important to us. Can I do the survey? And in Spain, 70% of the people say yes. So then we ask these questions. We'll say you can choose whether family, society, um, love, or faith. Almost always it's love or family. And we have these great questions that help people think deeply about these issues. But the last two questions are always the same. It's what would you regret if you were to die today? Mm. And what's interesting is they started thinking about these deep issues about love or family. It's interesting because they have a real deep response. One, I remember, remember this couple, um, he said, you know, where it was love was the issue. He said, I haven't told my mom I love her in a long time. And there's an interview on my, wow. on my YouTube channel. I, I do this evangelism course. It's in Spanish, so it's no good to anybody here. But um, we go out in the streets and we film some of these interviews. And this one older gentleman in a small town in Spain, <clears throat> I, I asked him questions. His answers were really short. But when I got to the end, I said, what would you regret if you were to die today? He said, I would regret how bad we are as people. Hmm. And I said, so you think we're bad by nature? And he says, yes, I think we're, I think we're evil. And so wow. the last question, what would you regret? The next one is, would you want to meet God personally today if you could? Hmm. 70% of the people say yes to that question. And so then we just say, let me tell you how I met him. That's encouraging though. Yeah. People are looking. Wow. People are searching. But the thing is, is how are they going to find God? So we actually train people on how to share your testimony in two minutes. It's what was your life like before Jesus? What was your encounter with Jesus like? What changed in your life? after you met Jesus. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if there's not been a change in your life, I strongly would suggest you've never met Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look at Paul's yes. life, yes. Paul's testimony, what he was like before when he talks to the King Agrippa, what happened, his encounter on the road to Damascus, right. what changed in his life. Right, that's so true, Lance, that's so true. So as you share that with the people, fruit. people are people are blown away and it's like, I can know God. And you say, well, of course, God wants to know you. Amen. So we're seeing Amen. thousands Amen. of people come to Christ every year. Um, when people say people aren't hungry for God, I, I have to respectfully disagree. I believe people are starving for God, but they're filling mm. themselves with junk food, with other things to replace wow. that. Yeah. I, and when people say a mission field is the something where I was just talking with Nikki today, they're and she filling said, filling themselves with junk food. That's what you said. They're most people fill themselves, themselves with junk, junk food. food. Can you explain what you mean? What do you mean by that? Sure. It could be whether it's you know music or drugs or sex or or even good things, but not God, whether your career, um, right. you know, working hard okay. to feel fulfilled, but there's still a void. The yeah. only thing they'll fill the void is God, but we try to Amen. fill it with all the kinds of other stuff. Junk food. Junk food. Wow. That's a great analogy. And so yeah. I, well, cause I had somebody say to people, to me the other day, people aren't hungry for God. And I say, I, I respectfully disagree. I think they're desperately hungry for God. They just don't know that it's God they're hungry for. That's right. Wow. So I, I think if we as Christians understand how to be relevant, we understand the culture, we use terminology that's relevant to the people that we're talking to. We don't, we, we don't come across, I mean, I, I, I asked if I could wear my hat because that's what I always wear. Um, you said, well, you can represent yourself however you want. Well, this is me. You know, this is me, right. whether I'm preaching. Actually, last time I preached at my church that, that we just started, I wore this, well, similar hat, another Oakley hat, um, just because this is who we are. So people are looking yeah. for authentic. And what we find is when people find people that really love Jesus, and it's not just a religious thing, but they have a relationship with God, we're finding young people and older people. I had a 73-year-old woman that was at one of our events. She was the first person at the altar call. And I let a local person, a local believer, pray with her. But I went up to her afterwards and I said, why did you come forward? <laughs> and she said, I've been waiting 73 years to hear that message. Wow. People Praise are searching. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. So I, I just want to encourage years. everybody. I mean, be authentic, be real, use yeah. verbiage that people are used to. You don't have to be super spiritual and don't have to use terminology to sound important. Just yeah. share what God did in your life. That's right. Yeah. Wow. That's a beautiful story about this woman that's just saying, I've been waiting for that all of my life. Whole life. I mean, 73 years waiting for someone to really share an authentic message about Jesus. And it was rappers and dancers. And that, that's what our, our event was that night. And she was an okay. old lady, but, wow. but it was dramatized and, and she understood the storyline of the gospel.
Yeah. And she's the first person to respond to the gospel. I was so excited. That's so beautiful. Yeah. That's powerful. And you know, Lance, the first time I heard you speak, it was in a Pentecostal church and in Georgia. And what I really remember about you was your authenticity. Honestly, that's what I remember. And I was so hungry at that time. I just come out of such a, a whirlwind, such a traumatic experience and I was needing healing. I was needing mm. to hear from the Lord, I was needing direction. And, and you prayed for me that night and you, you spoke powerfully uh, words out of the Holy Spirit, prophetic word about my future ministry, things that I couldn't have even imagined for my life. I, I remember thinking, what? God's going to do what? <laughs> really? And here we are, you know, basically yeah. this moment is the fulfillment of, of what you said and to a degree of, you know, that this, this broadcast airs to 195 nations of the world. You said that God's going to, you know, impact, use this ministry to impact the world like a tidal wave. Do you remember saying that? I remember, yeah. I remember thinking that, how could that be? But that's the power of prophetic word. Hmm. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit to give us words for people. We don't even know. How do you incorporate that? They're the best because you don't know. And so you have to depend on the Holy Spirit. I love, yes. I love giving prophetic words to people that I don't know anything about because I can't use my knowledge. And it's just, it's either God and or it, I'm it off. It completely wrecked me. I remember just the, the anointing was so heavy. I couldn't hold my head up. And it was just the tears were just falling, falling, falling. I'll never forget that moment. So, you know, we got to have the Holy Spirit to help us in That's evangelism. Sure. We can't just go out and tell people Bibles and tell people about Jesus. No. We have to know Jesus ourselves and we have to have a relationship with him yeah. that is authentic, that is real, that is on fire. And that we have this relationship as well with the Holy Spirit, that we're allowing Holy Spirit to yeah. do everything Holy Spirit wants to do in and through us so that we can effectively Amen. reach the lost. I mean, that's what we're talking about today, effective evangelism. We don't want to just go on a street corner and get out our megaphone and, you know, blow horns and put up our picketing signs and, you know, you're going to go to hell if you don't know Jesus. You know, we want to be able to reach people in their heart, mm. to reach them to where they would know you know, that Jesus loves them because we know that Jesus loves us. You know, we love because he first loved right. us. So if we haven't experienced the love of Jesus, how can we love others well? How yeah. can we even possibly point them to Jesus? Yeah. Well, you know? and, and like you said, it's not just a matter of just getting a message out, but it's actually connecting with what they need to hear. That's why you have to follow the Holy Spirit. And it's, that's the, yeah. for me, that's the funnest part, actually yeah. flowing with the Holy Spirit and the message is the message, but you have to know how to connect. And I think that's what Paul did there in the Areopagus in, in Greece. That's what we have to learn to do today. Amen. Amen. Well, Lance, it's been amazing having you on the show today. Thank you so much for telling My all pleasure. your stories from 29 years of ministry. I mean, there's a lot to share. But um, you've certainly blessed my life. You've been a great example, great mentor to me. And I'm just honored to have you with us today on Be Free. So thank you. God bless you. And thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time. God bless you.